All right, the old carnivore diet's going a little bit different angle tonight, and we're going to be cooking two great big front quarters off of a pig that we shot here on the farm, and we've got these. They are rock solid. They are frozen right out of the freezer. So I thought a good way to really get these thawed out good before we actually cook them in the smoker would be right there on the wood stove inside the house. I want to tell you a little bit about this wood stove. They say that people like stories. So here's the story of this wood stove. This wood stove is, let's see if I can show you the label here. Right on the front, it says Drolet. Drolet, that came from Canada. Got a really good deal on this. When we first got this, it was a completely square stove and it had a wraparound sheet metal box it had a square stand that it stood on and uh, we put so much gap when we designed our new home we got so much gap around it that uh, we didn't have to have that sheet metal so i went ahead and took angle grinder cut that sheet metal box off of it so now you're looking at the actual steel plates my wife wanted a different color than black so we painted it this uh, real pretty color which is called a rose a shimmering rose and that's a very high temperature paint and then the silver color is a pewter then i ordered her some queen and legs and just had to drill four holes in the bottom of the stove and get some uh, large bolts some half inch bolts and stick those up through there so uh, we painted them the same so it's got a little trim parts here and there some of them you can't see because of the piggy up there but a uh, shimmering rose and then the uh the nice pewter color it came out pretty good we're real happy with it i painted it a couple of times to keep it looking good we got a dog door behind it with the cover on it right now so the german chippers can't come in and interrupt our cook time you'll notice uh that this stove when you get ready to put wood in this stove you don't have to do a lot of bending over and i'm not big on bending over to put wood in a stove you could just put that right in there just walk it you could have it on your hip i'll pretend like i'm putting a piece in there you could have it just uh right there at hips level ah oh, we can put this piece in and uh, you don't have to bend over anything this is a big old long piece of wood this stove will take 22s and that's probably a 26 so i go corner to corner but anyway the uh, throttle on this is right here. This is that breeze in through the top. So we'll go ahead and give that some throttle and let you show, let you see what it'll, what she'll do. And uh, I've got a temperature gauge on it here. But this heats our home. It's such a large stove that most of the time we don't have to have the whole thing running. So what I do is uh, half the stove I use for heating and the other half I use for just drying wood. And that's what you see me doing now. There's a great big thick log in there. It's just green as a gourd. You can see the water trying to come out of the base of it. And uh, so we'll just have the left-hand side will be the heating side and the right-hand side will be the, the drying side. That's the dryer. So, and we swap those back and forth. But uh, notice when I said I could just put the wood straight in, I didn't have to bend over. Notice that wood stove not sitting on the on the ground like most people's are and that's because of this rock we put it up off the ground it's about it's a little over two feet probably about 30 inches almost three feet two and a half feet up off the ground and the rock that you're looking at there is a 2600 pound rock say so how did you get that cutout done right there to hold your kindling and your whichever pieces you're loading into it next well the lord cut that for us we went out uh, in a place, uh, North Arkansas, and found a place that sold these rocks by the ton. And I think this one cost us right at $100. It was just a touch over a ton, it was $90 a ton, and we were sold it to us for, uh, for $100 even. As a dog sneaking around in there, she's looking for a warm place to lay. That's Miss Heidi. Heidi, did you find your place? Is that your place, Heidi? Heidi, is that your place to rest? Okay. You be good back there. Maybe I'll give you a piece of pork later. So the rock was is 2,600 pounds. My wife hooked up a come along to this uh, telephone pole across the property down low on the base. And then uh, we put some uh, 
two inch PVC pipe underneath it, like the Egyptians, that's what they always used to roll their stones was, uh, of course, the, the PVC. They probably used a three inch or four inch diameter PVC for the big, big stones for a pyramid. But uh, anyway, we rolled it, she rolled it and cranked it and cranked it and got it up here. So what we're doing with this, we're not in a great big rush on this. We are just, I'm gonna throttle this down before I burn my copy up. We are just using this strictly for uh, thawing that out. And I, I've got a pan there that wasn't very pretty. So we uh, we just put some foil in there. So it, you can't have a real dirty, ugly looking pan for a YouTube video because you'll make somebody's, somebody's eyeballs will pop out. So we just put the, cover that up with some pretty foil. And look at that, we are in the clean burn zone. We are going on up in clean burn. Anywhere in that uh, zone 300 to 600 degrees, this particular stove has a baffle plate in the top of it. And then it's got three or four stainless steel tubes that run across the top of it. And that wood starts to smoke a little bit. If it gets up to that temperature, that wood smoke will light off up inside there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that, see the stainless steel tubes in there? They get superheated and they get cool air coming in from the sides and it will fire off. And then that uh, special white buffer pad in there keeps all those flames from just going out the tube. You don't want to just go out the tube because you'd, you'd lose a bunch of heat. So I've got my coffee pot. This is one of those uh, French presses. Got him here. We might as well have some fresh coffee. Look at that. That is some good looking coffee right there, boy. That is some gourmet coffee. And I put some, uh, ground some beans up and added some uh, eight o'clock ground beans to it. It's a Folgers Gourmet. A little bit of cream in there. And I've got some of that squirt liquid uh, stevia, skevia, however you pronounce it, non-sugar. And we really, we really avoid sugar. I avoid sugar like uh, poison because that's what it is. White refined sugar is poison. It'll kill you. Bitter than a hammer, and it's in everything. It's either that or uh, high fructose corn syrups and everything. Once you go carnivore, the advantages of going carnivore is your insulin system in your body will not spike all the time. If you eat sugar, your insulin spikes real high, and then it makes your blood sugar start to go down, which makes you very hungry. So sugar will really put the weight on. You eat a dessert after a meal, it's going to even make you more hungry. And next thing you know, you're waking up in the night on a midnight snack. So this is uh, the choice to eat instead. Get you some good meat. Now this is pork. It's not the cleanest meat. If you want the cleanest, you go with uh, lamb chops. We're racing them now as fast as we can. Let's put a little seasoning on here. We won't, don't want to go without seasoning. Even though this is just in the thawing mode, look at that. That's some good stuff right there. That's garlic. We'll add some garlic. I'll probably sprinkle a little bit on top of the stove just so we can uh, smell this. Starting to think about cooking. And that, that catch pan is just going to catch any drippings that might come off that meat because it was really, really frozen. It's going to give up some moisture. But we can also take the same pan without hurting it and swap that right on over to the uh, smoker out there. And that'll be a good uh, good deal. It's kind of a rough pan anyway. Now I'm cheating on this. I'm not using my own dry rub. I'm gonna use uh, Tony Cacheries. I call him Tony Catchers. And we're gonna let him uh, kick in on this deal. Let the Cajuns do some work for us. And it's gonna be some beautiful pork. Now we're gonna spread this video out long. It's gonna be a really long video in segments. But uh, I'm gonna try to load this in different pieces, step one, two, three, four, like that. That way you won't have to watch a, a one hour video. But you can see, this is real simple and we're not gonna be in a rush. There's no rush on this. So we got our seasoning done now. I'll put that down over here. And we're gonna keep this nice and low. We're gonna keep our throttle we're going to put him at 1.5, and that'll let that run pretty steady. This stove will run even on a 1. And I'm dead center on my clean burn zone. 
We got our handle latch good, dog down. I just got through putting a brand new gasket. That is nice to have. Let me show you what I got here. Brand new gasket. Picked that up, uh, same company that made that up, uh, made that gauge, Rutland. Picked that up and has a nice five eighths gasket. Got it from Tractor Supply. They had it in stock with the glue to put it in. That was super easy. I just took that door off and took it over to the shop, took an angle grinder, with the wire brush in it and ground that track out all the way around. So I was working the door while it's cool. I was still warm, but I mean, it wasn't smoking hot. And then just uh, squirted me a little bead of their special black silicone, high temp stuff in there and, and uh, turned that gasket up on its side and slowly put it around in there until it fit real good. And I gave a little extra where I put the two, butted the two ends together, but uh, it was super easy. It took about 30 minutes, whole job was done. And, I rehung it while I had a small fire in there and closed the door real gently and just let it bake in. And it's great, boy. It really has made a difference. I can control my fire a lot better. Watch this. I'll give you a good example before I sign off. We'll throttle that thing up and watch that fire go, boy. I mean, it will not take it long. If you wanted it to go faster, you could open the door. But just that throttle right there, that lets that air start coming in. And the more air it comes in, that pipe starts to uh, get hotter. And the hotter the pipe gets going up the stack, that pipe starts to get hot. And the next thing you know, it begins to draw. It begins to draw like it's drawing a vacuum on the stove. And you can see it. It won't take long. You can overfire one of these stoves. It's not going to really cause any major problems except your paint job. But I keep my stove pipe good and clean so I don't have to worry about creosote fires. Having those secondaries in there, they burn the smoke. This is green wood too. I am burning green wood. I split it small, I stack it inside. So it has sat in the house like this for about a week. And just being good and warm and in a dry house, it doesn't take long to cure it. And the, the key with that, if you have to burn green wood, which I always do, is uh, just cut it into small pieces. Don't get above four by four post. Try to run two by two, two by three, three by three, something like that. And you can see that thing is, boy, it is wanting to rage. Now, temperature gauge, it hadn't moved yet, but it would. So it, it's a little slow. It's supposed to be. You don't want it super sensitive. So that will go to there. We're going to put that. That's funny. It looks like I'm off, but I'm not. There we go. There's one, it's just my angle. Let that go, leave my coffee up there. Of the two surfaces, this bottom one is really hot and the top one's got these air holes and it's got a big opening in the back of it. You can tell if you get too hot cause you can't touch your handle. So I just keep that stepped off a little bit like that, leave me a little air space so I can handle it without getting burned. And I can go back there to keep it a little bit cooler yet. There we go. So as long as the uh, dogs don't jump up there and try to drink my coffee and knock it off, we're in good shape. So we got a cup of coffee here. I better get after that. Uh, let's go ahead and sign off. But uh, we appreciate y'all coming by here at Whimsical Farm and watching the video for the carnivore. And we want to invite you. Eat some carnivore meals. This year could be your year to drop your body fat, drop 50 pounds, 75, 100 pounds. Just eat meat, eat carnivore meat, cheese, milk, eggs, and you will lose the weight every time you get hungry. Get you a snack, some pork rinds, uh, cook you a piece of sausage, two or three eggs, and you'll be, uh, you'll be nice and satisfied with that. So thanks again for watching. Please tap the like and subscribe, and we'll see you back soon. Over and out for now. Early in the morning, we are starting to finish up these nice pig legs, two pig legs. And you can see out here, we've got a fire that is kind of wimpy looking. That's some wood that's some fairly green wood, slightly dry. And what we're going to do is we're going to beef this up a little bit. So how you beef up a fire from scratch? You do it just like this. You borrow some coals from your wood burning stove in the house with a square point shovel 
And then you watch out for a little fighting babies. So you get back fighting babies. You get back. Papa's got a hot fire. And then you bring it over here like this. And this is the movement of fire. We're moving some fire over here. We gotta watch these babies. We got some babies all over the place. We'll get these in here, sprinkle a little bit, sprinkle a little bit, sprinkle a little bit, tell these babies to back off. Set that shovel down over there so nobody gets burned. And we'll rake this around a little bit. Next thing you know, we'll do some proper fire management here. Get some of these ashes out. Get those ashes to go down. Some coals there. Get this piece of wood back over here on top. And that won't take long. That will fire up and go. Let's see if I can get that just like I want it. Let's move them over just a little bit more. About like that. That should kick off and go here in a minute. Get these ashes down. That wood is green as gourd, but we're going to make it work. So, we got that part done. Let's let that sit for a little while and heat up. Put that box shut. Wide open throttle there. Wide open throttle up top. Let's take a look at these pig legs and see what they came out to be like. Pig legs. We got two of them. Let's see what they look like. I had them in the oven last night. We cheated a little bit. Put that oven on 250 and let those cook through the night. Wow-wee. That is getting tender in a hurry. I mean, very tender looking. Let's see if we can do it with a spatula. It may be sloppy, but uh, we'll see how, how falling apart they are. Maybe they're not too falling apart. So I kind of want them to get dry like you do with a dry rub and a bark and all that. And That's never going to happen like they sit. So let's just see. Maybe they're still tough enough. Uh, not tough enough, but you know what I mean? Hold together enough that I can do this job. Okay, that's a whole leg. It's not a leg of lamb here. This is a leg of pig. Well, that's a, that's a job. Look at that. I got him. I got him. He's pretty tender, though. Let's see if I can do this without making a huge mess. Let's see here. I'm going to put that just like that. We want to cook a bark on there. That is getting tender. So we're not going to have to do a whole lot more cooking. But you can see, look at those little bones and all that good au jus. I'll pour that au jus up. We're going to save every drop of that. We're not going to lose none of that au jus. Now let's see if I can get this second leg. Boy, you got to have a heavy-duty spatula for this job. I hope this works good. I'm being very careful. One hand on the camera, one hand on the pig leg. Very careful. You do not want to drop that much meat. Boy, that's looking pretty good now. I'm telling you, it's starting to look like something. I'll deal with that all as you later. We're going to put some Tony's on here, caging this up a little bit. Should be able to cook a really nice dark bark on here. I'll let that fire get on fired up a little bit more. That's a pretty good looking pig legs. That's a whole front leg off a pig. Two of them. That's his front, front, and then the front. All right, we're good on that. I think I would like to have me some... What else would I like to have? Not lemon pepper. I don't want that. I think I'm going to have me just a little bit of this. This is me getting crazy as usual. Some of my red pepper. Let's just do a little sprinkle. Not go crazy today. Try not to go crazy. Just a little red pepper. This is not super hot, so that makes me feel a little bit better. I've already got my black pepper on there. Uh, let's see here. I've got another seasoning here. This is a steakhouse seasoning. We're going to try a little bit of this steakhouse seasoning buttery steakhouse if it's still viable it uh been out in the cold some steakhouse seasoning buttery steakhouse that's what kinders buttery steakhouse it's a master blend gonna put a good coat of that on there just 
using the rest of it up. Looking good. Okay. How is he ever going to do these two legs? Tell you what, I am not going to take a chance on this with one hand because that would be super stupid. So I'll be right back. Okay, we didn't take a chance on that falling. And here's what we've got. We've got a nice fire. That wood's still a little bit green, but it's starting to burn good. Not smoldering or smoking too bad. I put two big doses of coals from the inside wood stove with the old square point shovel. So we're going to shut that down and let that roll. We'll run it wide open throttle. And we got the meat in there. Look at these two big old pig legs. Man, they look good. And I've got my probe in there. We'll see what that looks like. Like I say, we cheated in the night and we cooked these right at 250 for about uh, seven hours through the night. Now let's take a look and see where we're at on our internal temperature. Oh boy, that's good. We're going to go ahead and drop this down. We don't need no 212. Let's drop that down to, let's just call it 200 even. That'll be my alarm point. 171. So we're looking good. It got on up there in the night. It probably got up to about a 185 or so. I've been out here fooling around with it. It's cold as can be out here. 35 degrees. And I am not dressed for cold weather. We're going to let that roll. Let's see what our temperature. Boy, those were cold. They were cold. You can see. Like I say, it's 35 degrees outside. That top one's coming on up. It won't take long. We'll come back out here in a little while and check on these and make sure we don't have a runaway fire. But even if it does run up to 300, 350 for just a few minutes, it's not going to hurt a thing. So we'll be back and take a look at the bark a little bit later. Over and out for now. Okay, coming back out to have a quick look and see what kind of shape we're in now. I had added a piece of wood to the fire. Let's check the fire a little bit. Oh, yeah. Fire's looking really good. We got the ending of our coals. One piece is burned about uh, halfway up, and that fresh piece is already lit good. So we're looking good on our fire. I've got it wide open throttle right now. I just now did that to get everything ramping up a little bit because when you open the door, you're going to lose a lot of heat. You can see we're going up to 400 degrees there. We're right at the exact level we need to be in the cook zone. And I've got throttle wide open up there. Let's have a look here and see what we got on the old piggies. Uh, we're starting to get something happen. Let's drag these out so we can access them a little bit and be very, very careful. I'm bringing it on out. That'll hold it right there without it falling. They welded in some tabs on this grill, which is very wise. And now I'm going to try to switch hands. We're going to add some au jus. Au jus is right down there. I'm gonna add a little bit on the top. I put quite a bit of dry rub on this. I found some of my own personal dry rub. So I added some of that to it. And it could be a little bit too dry. So we're gonna just uh, add a little bit of au jus. I hope that's coming out good for you on the video. I get to look at my, at my hands. I don't have a film crew yet. My wife is uh, still She's uh, working on some morning errands and things. So I'm trying to make this. Man, that's starting to look good though, isn't it? I'm telling you. It's, uh, that'll turn brown. That's just a little bit of skin out of the au jus. That's a very rich combination of, uh, combination of melted fat, a little bit of water, a little bit of pork tallow, a little bit of rendering that'll kind of calm that dry rub down i had a little too much and that'll help it to uh not be too thick you don't want people to eat a big mouthful of dry rub because it's pretty salty it's pretty spicy some people spritz and that's okay i me and me and spritzer bottles we don't get along as i inevitably will put some cayenne or something in there and I'm sprayed along, and the next thing you know, I have lost my spray, and the thing gets stopped up. So I am not a spritzer bottle kind of a guy. I use a great big shovel-looking thing like that. It never gets stopped up. It always works. That's why I use it. Now, in a commercial setting where you had a whole bunch of uh, pork roasts that you were doing, 
or maybe some brisket or whatever. I understand that. But for me, I can waste a little au jus, even if I spill a little bit on the ground or in the stove. It won't be wasted in the stove. It's going to make it smell good. So now we're going to actually use a shovel. See what I can do with this shovel right here. I won't put that on the food, but I'm going to lift up, see if this will work. And look at that shovel. See a corner sticking right through that grating. And I got control of that thing or precision controllers. There that goes. Hang him back up where him goes. I love the old saying. I think I've got this from old timers. I'm not old yet, 62, so I'm still a young man. But uh, I say what the old timers did. Uh, a place for everything and everything in its place. A lot to be said for that. So now we'll go ahead and throttle this back down to choked off. Uh, these have uh, four holes in them, so when you put it 90 degrees shut like that, you're not actually shut shut. But that draws a, makes the draw or the vacuum be a lot less. And down here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to shut it down to where it can barely breathe. And it will. And it'll come on back up to 250. We'll finish out off at the 250 range. Let's see what we got. Oh, see that? My alarm set for 200. We're at 192. Now on this one, we want to just let it run until it gets a good bark and hopefully hit that 200. I may go slightly past that because I'd like to have a, a pretty bark and dry edges on it and render that last bit of fat out. Those uh, pig legs, they had quite a bit of fat on them. They were pretty fatty. It's a big, uh, big thick uh, plat of white fat and we want that to go ahead and burn off you know i'm gonna go ahead and open that back up just a skosh let that breathe a little bit more we'll come up to about uh we'll come up right at 250 maybe a little bit above there's a little difference in these two and right where it sits is kind of between them so that hits 350 that hits 250 that uh pork uh legs i'm gonna call them pork roast almost is gonna be right at 275 300 so i'm happy with that we put some fresh water in there and that'll Keep the smoke sticking good. So be back with you here in a few minutes. So on the next one, we should be finished. All right, these two pig legs have finally finished off with the vertical smoker. So we're gonna pull them out and cut them up. See what they taste like. Here they come, look at that. Wow, that's some good looking pork right there. We're gonna go ahead and pull these off the trays. We will put these right here in the stainless steel pan. Let's see if I can do this without tearing them completely apart. Oh, that's working good. That's working good. There's one. Not near as sloppy as before. This is in the shadow. We'll bring them out where you can see them. There he is. Very careful. Well, we got that part done. So that part's done. Now let's come over here to the table. We'll do some surgery. Okay, we've got lots of dogs out here and some of these are baby dogs, so they do not know the rules of engagement for this. So I can't just let them uh, jump all over the place. I may have to put these right up here for right now. That one there, this one right here. That can be a receiving tray. And let me get some au jus. I will be right back. Get out, Charlie Brown. Okay, here's our au jus. You gotta have that. Okay, we had to do a little reorganizing because the dogs want to get in on this uh, dissecting part. So here's what we're gonna do. This is the, the front leg and quarter of the pig. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, debone this. I'm gonna run the length of the bone, come this way, and see, see how it goes. It's plenty tender enough. Let's see how this works. Well, that is looking good. And just open this up good. Look at that, that's some beautiful stuff right there. So we're gonna just take this apart like that. That's got the bone in there from the shoulder. Just 
pull this apart and we'll pull this big chunk off here now this has got all the grain going that way pull these bones off lay that aside now let's see if that'll slice I think that'll slice this way now let's try this and see what it looks like wow look at that smoke ring now that's a good looking smoke ring right there that looks good got that redness look at that right there that's beautiful it is definitely tender so we'll use this blade right here this is a serrated edge we're not making pulled pork sandwiches we're just basically making slices of pork this is the front leg a little bit of the shoulder just drag that across like that uh oh i hear a pig in the background he does not know that this is kinfolk now that's okay we get a little shadow here for you now watch how precise this cuts i mean that thing is nice look at that that's some beautiful meat right there you got that bark on there look at that that's beautiful it's like prime rib but it's uh another pork see the little white fat right there that little jelly fat's good stuff so uh let me um, let's see here. I want to go ahead and get this put in the pan. We're going to put this in the pan real quick so that we don't lose anything. Let's see if I can pull this this way like that. Put that right on the edge of that. Put this right over here a little bit on the edge of that. And we'll use this large blade as a spatulosis. This is a very nice knife too, but it is razor sharp and I got to be careful. I don't want to cut my hands off with that. So let's do that. Real careful like. I could use my spatula, but this is pretty handy, so we'll just use it. As long as I don't cut my finger. Those little black ends right there, dark ends, that's what people fight over. That's some good stuff. That little piece is too dark. Not too dark for the dogs. Alright, let's keep this going. Go ahead and pull this bone out here. That's for the big guys. Pull that apart. There's another bone right there. Pull that apart. And there's a little crispy part. We'll put that in the pan like that. Another little bone here. These dogs, some of these dogs are going to get some of this, the big bones. Uh, maybe that one for the little guys. We're not going to give it to the big dogs because so they could get choked on that. So let's go ahead and uh, take this apart. I'm going to lay this this way so I can control it a little bit better. I think i got a bone right there. We'll pull that bone out. Look at that, now that's a shoulder section. Just deboning it as we go. Another little bone, that has no bone. That's a nice little crisp part. We'll go ahead and cut that in half. Got a little long grain to it. Look at that beautiful color. See that red right there? Mm. Mm. God damn. Wow. I distracted myself. Let's try this brisket knife and see what it does. Mmm. They got two small dogs. They're watching. They know the Bible verse. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the rich man's table. And when you got that much meat, you're definitely a rich man. Let's see what we got here. We got one bone right there. This makes it real easy. A little piece of soft jelly fat. That's a little bit too much fat. And it's got grain running that way. So we're going to go ahead and slice across the grain, against the grain. That way it just melts in your mouth when you eat it. See that? Mmm. Man, that is some good stuff right there. I don't know how much of this you can watch me do, but it's pretty entertaining to me. I hadn't even eaten it, just tasted it, and it is very entertaining. It's so tender. That low and slow is the only way to go. When you're cooking pork, you can use some 300 degree temperatures, but you don't want to take your pork up above uh, about 200, 205, something like that. 
I don't want this to be really pull apart because like I say, we're carnivores. We are not uh, gonna put this in any sandwich bread. That's a little piece there. We're gonna share this with Charlie Brown. Here's Charlie Brown, let's see if he'll, you want some pork, Charlie? And here's a little baby giraffe. Oh, she got some. And then we'll give you a little piece, Heidi. Look here, now that's a fatty part. That's for girls that just had babies. I bet she'll eat it. Don't bite my hand now. She said, I'll take that, Papa. That's got some black on there. Sometimes, even with a very sharp knife, it doesn't want to cut that crispy part because it kind of glides over it. But this is cutting it pretty good. I sharpened this knife today. That's got that black right there. So it won't want to cut through that. And that's when you use your serrated. But uh, I've got to taste that little black part with that soft fat. Mmm. Wow. I'm telling you, that is some delicious meat. My wife is saying, she's a camera lady. And so, she's having to sit and wait. Let's do that one more time. I'm not a pro at this. I'm definitely not an expert. So, uh, I hope that you can see what I'm doing. All I'm doing is feel for bones for it. Get these big bones out of the way. Look at that. Now watch this. Look at that. That's professional technique right there. Feel for it. Feel for it. There's a bone. Heidi, get back. I'll give you a bone here in a minute, Heidi. Look at that. That's that whole front leg and shoulder off that pig. We uh, put the rifle to him. 45-70. I'm gonna go ahead and split this in half. Make it a little easier to handle. That big chunk right there, you can see the grains running that way, so. Cut against the grain. Try not to cut my finger. Don't want any finger slices or any blood, extra blood added to it. Now then, what we're gonna do here is I want to taste a piece. My wife can even look up while I'm doing it. This is a man that has dentures. Part of the equation. Mmm. It's very important that you cut against that grain, but that's just almost melting your mouth. It's not too much. If you cook it so soft that it's falling apart, you've gone too far. I mean, if it just totally just falls apart, you'll ruin the texture of your of your meat. That little bone there. Pull him out. That round ball right there, that's just some meat. I'm going to cut that against the grain. That's some good looking stuff, boy. Got that black. I'm using both blades just to try them out, see what I like. Look at that. See that jelly fat in there is not bad. That's not a bad thing for a carnivore person. That's our fuel. That got a little stiffness on the back side of it. Because it got dark there. Ooh, man, that is good. Heidi says, I wish I could just jump up there and eat all that, Papa. We're gonna grab that up while it's hot. Put it in the tray. Put that like that, that like that. Nice big chunks. Let's keep this going. There's a little piece right there. This is very soft fat right here. But it doesn't hurt anything if you reheat this. When it's taken apart like this, it will render some more. Some of that, some people don't like that jelly fat. I really like it if it's hot. Doesn't bother me a bit. But uh, that will render down some more. I just about got my finger on that one. Okay, that's very fatty. We'll put this on the fatty side. Heidi said, I'll take it all. We'll put that over there. That'll be just fine. Look at that burnt end right there, boy. You talk about something good. Let me taste this before the camera woman gets to get a hold of it. I want to taste this piece right here, a little burnt end. 
with the seasoning on it. Mmm. I feel sorry for people that just sit around and eat donuts and uh, Cheerios and Ho Ho's and broccoli and lettuce and a bunch of nonsense, a bunch of processed food. Because meat is the way to go. By far. That is the way to go. Mmm. Now, the only thing I use for seasoning on this pretty much is uh, Tony's. And a little bit of uh, garlic powder. And some pepper and some salt. And then I use a little bit of my own dry rub. Not very much. Most of it's just Tony's. So now you know. Now the way I did this, I cheated. I didn't tend this fire for hours and hours and hours. I put this on top of a wood stove when they were both totally frozen and let it thaw out until it's probably up to 100 degrees. And then I stuck it in the oven last night at exactly 250. That's the fatty part, that's fine, we'll eat it. And I let it run for about seven hours last night at 250. And it got it up to about 180 or so. And then today, finished it off with a vertical smoker and took the temperature up just a touch above 200 degrees. I didn't show it because it had already peaked and fell down. I had to go get cleaned up. So that's some good looking. Good looking uh, pork right there. There's a real fatty piece here. Howdy ho. There she goes. It's gone. We don't eat the just just outright jelly jelly fat, but you could have some of that with the with the meat, and it's fine. It doesn't hurt you. Now that's got a little bit too much for it, but with that right there, kind of soft and jelly. My body is calibrated to burn fat and protein now, so. Mmm. There's a bone for Heidi. Don't bite my finger. There you go. So, we wanted to tell you again, thank you so much for coming out in business here at uh, Whimsical Farm. And I hope that this year that you will try the carnivore diet. We have spoken with uh, some friends that uh, decided one man for sure, Mr. Shandon, he said, I shall try it. So uh, we wish him the best on this. Hope that he enjoys it. And there's just nothing really to go wrong. There's cardiologists, doctors all over the world now that have switched over to carnivore. Get away from the sugars, get away from the starchy vegetables, the beans, and uh, the broccoli and the lettuce. You don't want to go that route. A cow eats nothing but grass all day long, can gain four pounds a day. Cows get big and fat. Lions, tigers, they eat meat. They get ripped. I was 278 pounds. I'm 194 pounds right now. I went from a 2X shirt to a small. This is maybe a small medium, but I was 2X. Now I'm a medium. My waist was a 46. I was pushing 48. And now these pants here are some old oil field pants, but I can wear uh, 30 six pants now so 46 down to 36 lost 10 inches in the waist and you'll be able to see that easily from uh, some old garden videos i'm bending over to do something i'm just sticking out look like a tank of water or belly beer belly so if you want to lose weight you want to wake up early not need near as much sleep have your blood sugar stabilize your emotions stabilize this is a way to go so thanks again for watching please tap that subscribe and like button and little bell notification and we'll keep updating your own videos thanks again bye for now mm.